Nintendo Switch Lite. Show you what's going on. Switch you over to microscope. I have not had a look, chance to look at this yet, so. Oh boy, that looks like fun. Get that well in picture for you. Um, I don't know if we'll end up with collateral damage or not. We do have a couple of pins. I mean, all these pins are making contact to ground. So it really depends on if they try to put power to it, if we're going to have collateral damage or not. But we won't know until we get the board out and pull that port, because we can't even do any testing until we get that port off. Because all, like I said, all those pins are making contact to ground. They ought to show us ground. So we got to pull it and go from there. Okay. We are disassembled down to the board level. And now we need to remove the port before we can do anything else. So let's get zeroed in on that. Okay. While I'm setting up my equipment, I will throw up my expected temperatures for this job. Switch you back to microscope. Now we're going to do what we always do on the ports. We're going to flood it with low melts and go from there. Okay, we have it put it with low melt, so it's time to bring the sauce. Get you centered in here. And focused. And let's go. Take a look and make sure we have no bridging on the other side. No bridging. We do need to perform some tests. So we'll begin around the M92 T36. And let's connect our meter. Not that it's totally required because we're going to be in continuity and mostly listening for the beeps. I'm not really reading the meter here. There are repairs where I need to read it. So it's a good habit to have, but in this particular case, not so much. All right, let's find the ground. Now, just like on the Nintendo Switch, the normal Nintendo Switch, what we want to do is we kind of want to follow the traces from the capacitors to the chip. And most of them will have like one trace. Sometimes you will have a dual one. I don't see one right off the bat, but I'm sure there is one. If you have a dual one and it's a capacitor, it's always one side is always going to be ground on those. So don't be alarmed. As long as one side is not shorted, it's good. Just make sure we're actually working here now as I accidentally made contact with that one so. pulse alarm Looks like these guys might have gotten lucky all right let's check around our BQ24193 All right, these have duals right here, so one side will always be ground on these. Everything seems to be checking out. Very good. I don't do the test pads on these because I really don't know what the readout's supposed to be. I don't know what's ground, what's not. So until we kind of get a read on that, I'm not going to mess around there. But it looks like everything's checking out so far. 
So we may get away with just having to do the port on this guy. Which means I'm going to have to flip it around. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll clean up and prep for a new port, but we're also going to have to modify an existing Nintendo Switch port to fit on this. And these, I actually probably have a regular Nintendo Switch port here. The Nintendo Switch Lite ports are actually, let's see if I can show you, shorter than the uh, Nintendo Switch Originals. Uh, okay. It doesn't have, do any good to show you if I'm not going to have you in focus. But see how they're shorter? So we're going to have to take an original port and we're going to have to grind that down to fit the light. Otherwise the, the uh, plastic covering will not fit over the port. One of those things you have to do with this, this one because uh, there are no light ports available and if they are, they're pulls. And you don't know how good those people were at pulling them, so there's always that risk. If it were my own pull or something like of that nature, I'd be I'd be willing to try those, but I don't like trying other people's pulls. I know how difficult these things can be to not barbecue. Anyway, let's clean up. About as much prep as we can do at the moment. The next uh, step will be to grind down the uh, connector and then we'll be ready to prep it and then place it. Uh, I'll try and catch as much of that on video as I can but uh, we'll have to see how far I can zoom in here. Okay, looks like we did pretty good. It wasn't like banning me perfect. But it's hard to get perfection on these, so. But anyway, it's pretty close. I think it'll serve. Flip it over and take a look. Yeah, that's pretty close. If you get real close to these two tabs, like to even with those two tabs, you're probably safe. So, all right. We still need to prep this one and we'll definitely want to clean it out. Make sure there are no metal pieces, stray metal pieces like that one. In the port. Let's prep the port. And we'll get ready to place it and go from there.
Okay, I'm gonna have to be uh, real thorough here with uh, the cleanup, so I am going to clean up off screen and then we'll come back and do some testing. I wanna be, I'm gonna blow this out real good, make sure there's no metal shards or anything of that nature in the port. And once I am confident of that, we'll come back and perform some tests. Okay, I've given it a good blowout and cleaning and uh, I also filed it down a little bit. Get rid of some of that looser stuff. I think we are safe to perform a test. Well, what we'll do is we'll perform a test first with the USB-C dongle. Make sure we're getting behavior that we expect. Okay, that looks relatively normal. Flip it around. That looks relatively normal. Alright, and let's try now with our battery dongle. And this is more so I can get this on camera because I haven't really messed with the battery dongle for the light. Can't really use it in the housing because a ribbon goes over the battery, but should be able to get an idea of what the power profile looks like when activated we'll use the OEM to activate we're going to be watching channel 2 I just kind of want to get a read on what it looks like when it's trying to boot okay very similar to the original switch where it just kind of incrementally goes up very cool Power it off, power it off. Good. So it looks like it was trying to boot. Good news for us. All right. So we will take it back to the housing. We will reassemble and test from there. Uh, we'll probably have to just wait on their battery to charge because I do not have a switch light battery laying around so that's just one of those things even if i did it would be difficult to test it because your lcd cable goes over the switch light battery and yeah it's all sorts of complicated to do to test this like i would test a normal switch anyway let's reassemble go from there okay as you can see we're back up and running on their battery we're fast charging on this side, so we want to flip it around, make sure we're fast charging on the other side as well. And we are. Very good. And okay, let's make sure everything is working as it should be. Okay, well the board is not all the way in there, so have to be a little bit careful. But anyway, everything seems to be working as it should be. I'm going to reassemble entirely, and then we'll come back and uh, look it over one more time, make sure it's uh, fully functioning. But at this point, it looks like it's fully functional. Okay, as you can see, we're all back up and running. It's charging on both sides. All the buttons appear to be working fine. The I would be worried about anyway. So that's really going to be it for this repair. Uh, in summary, we just had a really smashed up port. Uh, on these we had to remove the port. Well, I ha we had to remove the port to do any testing first uh, because all the pins were kind of smashed to the housing and the housing is ground. So every pin on there was pretty much shorted to ground. So we had to do remove the port. Then we performed testing. It didn't appear there was any collateral damage. Put a new port on. We had to modify the port, uh, an original switch port, to fit on the switch light because they are not available any other way. Well, they are available out there as poles, but again, I explained my reasoning for not wanting to use the poles. Anyway, uh, it's charging again, charging on both sides, no issues. Uh, all the buttons and everything are working, and that's something you have to worry about when you're putting this back together because 
you know, the, the membranes or something can get misaligned or whatever. Uh, and sometimes it can be a little bit of a challenge, challenge getting this housing back on too, so you just got to be patient. And it's you really have to be patient putting these things back together because they're quite a bit more painful in reality than the Switch original. And they're cheaper, so you're putting more work into this one for about the same work, same price. Anyway, that's it for this repair. If you have any questions about the equipment I use in this video, take a look in the description below. Uh, if you like this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like it, hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification bell. Then you'll know when I post a video, which is usually about twice a week now. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, please post them in the comments below. Uh, I'll try and answer them or direct you, direct you somewhere that can't answer them. Uh, that's really all I have to ask of you. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the channel support. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>